their program. All right, the China University of Technology has suspended all contact classes following the death of another student from COVID-19 related implications. The student who lived on campus passed away last week. She was the second TUT student reported to have succumbed to the deadly COVID-19 pandemic. Now, yesterday, South Africa recorded 3,285 new COVID-19 infections and 89 related deaths, taking the toll to 57,063. Now, let's discuss this further. We are joined via Zoom by Professor Ramnik Alwalia, uh, Professor um, from Higher Health CEO and Medical Expert. Professor, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Obviously, a very busy day for uh, the Department of Health this afternoon. But let's, let's zone, zone into this story now. Let's start with the high numbers of infections that we are currently experiencing across the country. Firstly, are hospitals coping? And how concerned are you with the rise in infections? See, I think um, <clears throat> you're absolutely right. Uh, this is a huge concern. And when you're talking about, uh, I don't think we should be now saying that we are on the brink of a third wave. I think we must declare now that we are uh, now uh, in the third wave. In fact, our four or five provinces have kind of shown our data very much similar to, to be absolutely as per the, the, the data for us to be in the third wave. And, and this it really implies that the virus is spreading extremely fast. Um, and now, there are four factors that we need to look into why this is happening and why this is a concern for all our hospitals around the country. And number one is the seasonal factor. We are in winters. People are in closed rooms. Windows are closed. It's, it's cold. Um, you know, my office policy, and I've been telling everyone, is bring your blankets, bring your jerseys, but keep the windows open because the only way to defeat this virus is through proper ventilation. Now, it is clearly established this virus is, is, is airborne like a flu or uh, measles and other kind of airborne viruses that we have seen in the past. Uh, they, they remain with aerosol spread and they've spread very quickly in closed rooms with no ventilation. So seasonal factors playing a very predominant role at this moment. The second big factor is, um, <clears throat> which we are now experiencing, uh, which is behavior. You know, we have clearly seen that people, you know, once the second wave has gone out, people are mingling into parties together, family functions are happening, uh, people are congregating together in big numbers, wearing a mask, and all the things that we have been preaching are, are reducing uh, quite enormously. And that has led to exactly what we've seen in India recently or in Turkey. Uh, predominantly, we are experiencing now in South Africa, which is uh, resistance to behavior, fatigue with behavior. The third important factor is the multiple variants. Um, we know on in South Africa, we've got a a major um, variant of concern uh, called uh, the, the, the beta uh, by the, the new WHO norm. We don't say it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a variant detected in South Africa called the 501V2. And that has been a, a kind of a havoc for the second wave and it's still existent within our provinces, within among us, uh, and freely moving from one human to the other because all the virus enjoys is one body to the other body and that is its way of surviving and and breaking that chain is where we need to take our role so so and the other variant we've seen on our shore is the variant detected in uk which we call it as an alpha <clears throat> um, uh, variant huge variant of concern and predominantly a lot of cases in touting are uh, being genetically concerned with with this alpha variant which is in south african shore the third one uh, of a variant of concern is the um, the Delta one, which is the India one, the virus detected recently in India. <clears throat> now, this virus has been uh, seen among travelers that travel to India, from India to South Africa, but we have not yet established that that has been a major concern of, of its cause of the third wave or the, the variant. And I'm sure genetic studies will show further about any other variant or something we are not aware of at this stage. But clearly, um, multiple variants are a huge concern and the variations or multiple mutations that are happening in the viruses where the, all the virus is changing its shape or mutating is all to survive because it wants to defeat your natural immunity. It wants to defeat the human immunity or even if 
somebody had the virus, had produced a natural immunity, the virus would like to change its shape so that it can defeat us. So this is another, the third factor. And the last factor is um, many South Africans in the first wave or in the second wave did become infected. Many we know because they tested and we know the testing results. And at times we had 18,000 people were being tested positive in the particular day during a second wave. And similarly, it happened in the first wave. But there were many asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic that never tested, were contact to contact COVID positive and were positive and produced natural immunity. But what science is trying to understand is that uh, a year down the line, does the immunity remains or it weans down gradually, which means the chances of reinfections can happen or, or, or the exposure of one body to another, uh, to this, um, uh, to, to reinfection is high in that regard. So these are four critical factors that is where we are concerned with and we are advising towards our understanding of this virus a year from now and, and behavior and seasonal factor will predominantly be the highest for us to be very careful of in this period. And in fact, Prof, you are not the only one who is concerned. We spoke to the Medical Association recently, and they said that the situation is bad, and that in fact that we are in the eye of the storm. They're also calling for tighter restrictions by government. What's your reaction to this? Because we, we're not seeing, I mean, we know that we've moved from level one to now level two, but um, you, you've mentioned some very interesting things, um, including ventilation. Um, we, we are in winter, a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't think that that would be one of those, um, you know, constrictions that we need to introduce so that we, we curb um, the spread. But, but you are introducing it now um, in the middle of winter. You're also saying that we are in the third wave, you know, so um, what are you saying about, you know, those calls from the Medical Association saying that, in fact, we do need stricter restrictions from government? I think I have a, a slightly different view around it, you know. Um, you know, this virus um, is, a, is a major pandemic globally. But it's also kind of becoming endemic. You know, we, uh, it's, it's going to live with us for a much longer time. It's formed a human to human existence. Uh, it started coexisting with human beings. Um, it enjoys human body. It's moving from one body to the other, irrespective of your young, old, uh, uh, children, adolescents, uh, or people who are sick or not sick, irrespective of your gender, race, this as long as you're a human body, the virus is enjoying its spread from one body to the other. And it also enjoys moving and in, in hiding in certain bodies which have low immunity or comorbidities or certain bodies that the virus enjoys to sit, hide and mutate and move and change its form. So at this moment, the virus is coexisting with human. And when you enter into such a situation with, with viruses or pathogens, and then we as humans need to start realizing that we need to live with it. Like we live with flu. We lived with many other bacteria and viruses in the world. Now, what we need to learn is how do we defeat this virus? Um, and, 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 and yes, restrictions are very, very critical. But livelihood of people, economy of people, daily wages who are depending on hunger. Hunger is a major source. COVID, mental health is growing. And many other pandemics are growing under this COVID umbrella. It, closing an economy is an answer if we as humans do not abide by the behavior change. So the message that the media through you, we want to send to everybody is, let's follow behavior. The only way we can defeat this virus is if we wear the mask, social distance and remain in the ventilated places, we will not give this virus the freedom to move from one body to the other. It, you, we as humans will lead ourselves into a situation where government will have no choice than to put curfews and restrictions. But that's not the right way to approach when you, when you know when you are in a fight with the virus for a much longer time. Um, and and when, you are, when you are existing to go with this virus, for how long will you keep on expecting government just because of our own behaviors that we will not be in a position to uh, to compromise many more South Africans whose livelihood depends on economy. So yes, you're right. 
there is a time when the president or the government will have to take tougher restrictions. Um, probably we are entering that zone in many provinces already, but it is about exactly from our own human behavior that we need to learn that is the only answer to fight such, such an infection is to, to remain in a situation where we can follow behavior change and, 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 and able to defeat this virus. Professor, I've run out of time, but I want to squeeze in this last question uh, very quickly. Uh, the purpose of this interview was obviously to reflect on the second student that has passed on at TUT due to COVID-19. Now the university has been forced to, or, or the higher learning institution has been forced to go back into online learning. I mean, are we not concerned that um, more institutions will, st will then start suspending, um, you know, contact learning and, and going more uh, virtual? I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, and, um, you know, in terms of preserving the livelihood of the country and that we can't restrict the country any further. But the reality is people are dying and students in this case are dying. So the, 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 uh, it's, it's very sad to see a young life go, uh, uh, dying because of COVID or COVID-related complications. And it's a brutal reminder that the virus doesn't spare young people. Um, uh, it enjoys every human body, as I've been saying, you know. Um, it's just that the old people and people living with comorbidities or middle-aged people with comorbidities are high prone to hospitalization and severe infections and deaths compared to young people but it does not spare young people. And that's a big lesson that comes from TUT. Um, there are not just the TUT, there are uh, many um, institutions of higher learning as I speak to you right now with higher health that we are working with are experiencing outbreaks from residences. You know, residences are congregate settings, um, play people who congregate together, reside together, and infections move from one person to the other very, very quickly. You're eating together, you're staying together. Um, and, and that's exactly where, in, in fact, sometimes some students go out and uh, bring the infection from off campuses, say from a restaurant or a club, but bring it back and then the virus spreads very quickly into the residences. That's exactly what we're seeing. Mm. And many institutions have different, uh, met, uh, different, um, uh, different uh, environments to consider. And it's a very holistic view of why TUT needs to take a decision as harsh as to close quickly. And maybe many universities might pursue, and as you rightfully said, the government will impose tougher restrictions because, uh, uh, because the, the virus can and is highly pathogenic towards causing fatalities and life needs to be saved. But as long as human behavior can also change, we can balance few things, but where we can't, we need to go to the stricter restrictions of saying, we, we, we are, our environment cannot allow and we need to close the, the, the institution. And that's exactly what TUT has done, right. looking at quarantine issues, looking at uh, a holistic issue of how many contacts are there. At this moment, um, the outbreak has been declared. There are many contacts to, to the individuals who are termed positive contact tracing and it's on its absolute peak right now. And we need to isolate people very, very quickly. All we are doing is breaking the chain of the spread of the virus so that the virus uh, break, we break the outbreak very quickly and we isolate people very quickly so that we cannot allow the virus to have its freedom of moving from one body to the other. Professor, so that's exactly so what QT has done. And you are absolutely right. Thank you so much for your time, Prof. Unfortunately, um, we have run out of time, but absolutely appreciate you being with us this afternoon. Professor Romnik Alwalia, higher health CEO and medical expert, again saying that um, it is important that we also ventilate um, over and above wearing of masks and social distancing.